In the filmmaking process for Joker, was there one scene, maybe toward the beginning of the principal photography, where you said, this is going to be great, and it just energized you, and it, it really kept you on this like momentum? Yeah. Honestly, it was like the first shot we did. Wow. The first shot we did shooting the movie was uh, him at the social workers scene. That is like the second scene in the movie. So when he's laughing, that big laughing spell, and then she starts asking him about you know the job and and the, and he, he's asking like that whole scene which is like seven or eight pages or so of material actually both social worker scenes and then when he comes back the second time and says you never listened to me all that we shot both those scenes it was like 10 pages of work in one day not even a long day but that first take of him performing i went this is gonna be pretty great like I was like, this movie could be divisive because it's darker than people expected or maybe not as funny as they would expect from Todd. Or I knew that there would be some things in which you go, we, we might not get all the, you know, the Batman and the, and the DC fans on board. But what we're going to make is going to be something that, that we're going to be really proud of simply because I could see it from that performance. And then honestly, I was like, I would go home and you know, excitedly show dailies to my wife and just because I was so excited to show her what we were doing. So I was feeling pretty strong and pretty like pretty high, high, high about the movie all the like from the beginning. And then it was really motivating because I recognized, oh, wait, OK, so we can't let off the gas ever. Like as opposed to like if you start slowly and you start to get up to speed and you're like, by two weeks in, you're like, oh, wait, now I understand the movie and we're going to start. And then you start like ramping and every day you're like trying to make it better and better. Here I was like, oh, shoot, day one was great. Day two was great. Day three, also great scene. All right, now it was like every day has to be this good. And so then it was just like a, it was motivating to just really keep hyper focused on making something that I thought could be certainly the best thing Todd and I had done together. Um, and I wanted it to be the best thing I had ever done. I just did. It was like a definitely a thing where I went, I just want this to be the best work I've ever done. And so I just stayed super focused every day to, to not let off the gas. So I was feeling pretty, po you know, pretty positive about the movie right away. How much of the film is improvisational? I don't know how much would be improvisational. There's a lot of improvisation as to like sort of the, the way that we don't rehearse and we don't put down marks and we don't really, we just start shooting the scene and sort of witnessing it in real time. And that way it's very improvisational. As far as within the body of the scene, not a ton. We did some scenes that were just ideas for things, you know, that were not necessarily in the script when we first started that would just become sort of ideas that we could do in terms of like him in the apartment and things like that. But as far as, and, and, and you know, Joaquin was certainly fine to kind of go off the script a little bit in terms of just, like for instance, when he stood up and is playing with the gun and he's like talking to himself about like, oh, you're a really good dancer, you know, that wasn't in the script, that just was happening in real time. And, you know, it may have been discussions with Todd, but for me and my team, it was just like, this is happening, so let's just, you know, photograph it but generally speaking Todd's not one of those improv guys that just goes all right now try this now try that it's if we're going to change the script he changes it with the actors and and the writer and he kind of works it out a new version of the scene and then we'll just carry on from there and shoot that version as opposed to sort of changing it within the real improvisation is more in the sort of technique and and the fluidity in which me and my camera operator would tell the story as we would shoot the scenes and the fact that we you know, like i said we wouldn't rehearse or put down marks and those kind of things so we would just make the movie a bit improvisationally at times you know which would maybe half the time was it in the script that at times you weren't sure was this in arthur's mind or was it really happening i think that's just part of the script inherently right and part of the fact that the joker even in the lore of the comic books is an unreliable narrator of his own life. So he will tell stories and it's like, was that the truthful story? Uh, and, you know, I think I'm not a big comic book guy, but I know from like reading stuff and talking to people that 
he'll tell backstories about himself in comic books or graphic novels in which every time he tells a story, it's something different. I think to create this idea that is he, is he ever being truthful? Is any of it true? Is none of it true? That kind of thing. So I think inherent to the script, and certainly you're left to sort of question and ask yourself, is that real? Was I mean, and obviously we do it even in within the body of the movie with the Sophie character and that relationship to allow us to sort of see a manifestation of that idea in in a in a relationship that he fantasizes about, and that yet we're seeing it in a way that it looks like it's happening. So I think it's meant to allow you to have an interpretation as the audience to decide what's real and what's not. But it's certainly not something we wanted to key in and tell the audience precisely what was real and what wasn't, because I think we want the audience to have their own interpretation. We're in the talk show, like rehearsing for it and, 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 and kind of being his best self and then no spoilers, but going there and, and yeah, not and, knowing and, what was real. Yeah, and <coughs> it's one of those things that you know, we, we again, Taxi Driver is often used as like a, a template for the movie. And I think obviously because it's a disaffected guy who is, is doing a job and he sort of strikes out against society a little bit, has some of those correlations. But, you know, even that final, final scene in Taxi Driver in which he picks, picks up Sybil Shepherd in the taxi cab is up for interpretation, right? And I don't think when I watched it the first time, I questioned that interpretation. But when I watched it, you know, two weeks ago, uh, you recognize how even potentially obvious even the sort of stylistic aspects of some of the camera work in that scene could lead you to believe that like, oh, did Travis Bickle die in that shootout in the, in the, the lair of the prostitute? And this whole postscript of like him being a hero and getting the letter from, from Jodie Foster's parents. And is that all just a dream or is that all just you know a fantasy of like his afterlife or whatever when i watched it when i was you know in film school or you know back in in college i never and i didn't necessarily go to that interpretation but i recognize that people do so i think similarly people can do the same thing here if they choose to